Awesome. Okay, and I am starting the meeting. We are the Advanced Toastmasters Online Club, ato.toastmost.com. If you are watching this and would like to join us and learn more about us. And for our meeting today, I am Don Nocera, the Acting Club President. While we are, in, well, while we are starting uh, this new club and getting ready to charter, so yay. Our focus is on advanced Toastmasters and advanced leadership and Maverick leadership. Uh, could I ask if there would be somebody who would like to read our mission or club mission? It's on the agenda. If not, I can do it. You uh, locked up again. Um, read our club mission, you mean? Yes, please, Doug. I can do that. So we are an advanced Toastmasters club, which supports Maverick leaders to have more impact by providing advanced feedback on leadership skills and discovering what it means to be an out of the box, innovative leader. Back to you, Madam President. Thank you, thank you, Doug. Wonderful, so we are all gathered here together and I'm going to just jump right in and pass the meeting over to our acting Toastmaster for the day who has a nice fellow friend <laughs> coming across his screen, maybe. Well, yeah, you anyway. asked us to bring guests, but um, <laughs> It doesn't say much. <laughs> awesome. So I'm going to turn the meeting over to you, Doug, our Toastmaster of the day. And please help me welcome Doug, our DTM. Thank you. And uh, good afternoon or good morning or whatever time it is to everyone. I'm stepping into the role of Toastmaster at the last minute here because our scheduled Toastmaster appears to be unavailable, um, but we have to be able to do that sometimes. So maybe in light of that, I'll make the theme of the meeting to be spontaneity. And uh, that's a bit of a spontaneous theme too, so uh, it seems to fit. I also, I'd signed up to be grammarian, so I can hopefully continue to do that role. And I selected a word of the day to be nondescript, which to go to the dictionary basically means dull, drab, lacking in distinctive, uh, distinctive or interesting qualities. Also meaning not easily described. And I think that uh, sort of fits with the role or the theme of just being spontaneous and uh, and do things off the cuff. But as Toastmasters, especially advanced Toastmasters, we are very capable of such things. So I'll be paying attention to who says nondescript and maybe we can <laughs> be a bit more descript as we move along, we'll see. And I'll be keeping track of ums and ahs and filler words. I now, as Toastmaster, like to introduce our timer for today which is Trisha Grow. So please welcome Trisha to explain the timer's role. Thank you, Doug. It is my duty to keep t t track of the time during this meeting and I will be giving prompts with flashcards at the appropriate times. For example, for Pamela's 10 to 15 minutes, at 10, 10 minutes I will show the green indication at the 12 minute, I will show the yellow indication. And at 15, I will show the red indication, which will have 30 seconds to wrap up. Marks is four to six minutes, so at four, five, and six, and he will have 30 seconds to wrap up. The table topics are one to two. One, one and a half, and two. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Tricia, for explaining the times and showing us the cards. Um, also note, as grammarian, I just put the word of the day on our chat window so everyone will be able to, to see it. 
I also threw it under my name for those who uh, for those who can see that. For our speakers or whoever is uh, speaking at the moment, please make sure that Tricia is visible on your screen in the list of participants so that you'll be able to see her when she holds up the cards if you're not able to see everybody, all the participants um, in a gallery view. Okay, this, come, this brings us to our prepared speeches. Uh, great, I have, your, uh, I have your introduction, Pamela, by email. So our first speaker is Pamela Landers. Oh, and could I ask that everybody uh, mute your lines so that they don't have any interruptions? Our first speaker, Pamela, is sharing with us from the Leadership Excellence Series a module called Visionary Leadership. She has been a leader of most of her, uh, for most of her life, starting in junior high school, understanding that leadership requires vision to keep a team moving forward. Pamela is passionate uh, about understanding and employing methods to expand vision for leaders to be more effective. Please help me welcome Advanced Toastmaster Gold competent leader, Pamela Landers. Thank you very much. We're doing a PowerPoint today on visionary leadership. Be sharing that. One of the things I'm <clears throat> having challenges with my voice today, but it should be okay to get through this. Visionary leadership. The four points that we're going to be covering today are creating a vision. What does that mean? How do we create a vision? And what kind of input are we going to ask for to make that happen? Then the vision has to be shared. You have to tell somebody about the vision that has been created if you want people to follow the vision. Then there's committing to the vision, your commitment, as well as the people on the team. And then sometimes the vision needs to be changed because things happen. That's what we're going to be, the four points we'll be covering today. The first point is creating a vision, starting with listening to your gut. What's your passion? Where do you feel excited? Where do you feel enthusiastic? Where do you feel drawn? And talking next with a trusted advisor of some sort, somebody you can talk it through with, have conversation, get their input, their feedback, so that as you're developing the vision, you're not in isolation with it, you're getting help from other people. And then there's the team. The team helping you with a vision is really important because if the team is not helping you with a vision, their buy-in is a question. If they're buying into it because they participated in it, they've had their voice in it, it's gonna be so much easier for everybody to be on board with what it is that the vision is asking for. Then write it down. This is very important to get it in written form in some way so that it can be shared and people can read it. Some people are good at hearing things. Some people need to read things to really take it in. Having a written vision gives everybody the chance who especially need to hear things to take things in to read it, read it again, read it again, read it again, like we are doing every week in our Toastmasters group. I'm sharing our vision at the beginning. This is your organization. Wherever this vision is that you're responsible for creating, it needs to be your vision, not somebody else's vision, not trying to implement somebody else's vision. Even if you're part of a company, and you're a department manager, there needs to be your energy in the vision for your department. The bigger vision may come from a larger organization and having it be your ownership, you may want to modify something specifically in your particular group, a couple words or add a sentence on that hadn't been there that put your stamp on it. I worked at HP for 10 years, Hewlett Packard for 10 years, so there was a lot of that going on in our department. When you create a vision and communicate it with others, 
this is fabulous. And here's our vision statement. Well, I'll read it again, even though we just heard it. We are an advanced Toastmasters club, which supports Maverick leaders to have more impact by providing advanced feedback on leadership skills and discovering what it means to be an out of the box, innovative leader. Sometimes your vision requires a leap and it's a leap of faith because your vision to be effective needs to be five years out, 10 years out, 20 years out, depending on the kind of organization that you're wanting to create. Everything you know now is important, but where do you want to go? Where do you want to leap to? So faith becomes an important piece of taking a risk to say, well, this is what I really want. I've never told anybody this, but this is the vision that I really want to have. Like Dawn saying, I want to have a noon Toastmasters meeting that meets online. And talking about Maverick leadership, well, the Maverick leadership piece was a little bit of a leap of faith for a Toastmasters group, right? So we had a chance to t have many conversations about what that advanced Maverick leadership is in order to include it. And it's a leap of faith that people are going to want to join a group that's about innovative leadership. Yikes. The eagle's view. Eagle is a very powerful symbol for leadership. The eagle has the big picture and can see these little minute details, really minute details. This is a really good symbol to keep in mind as a visionary leader. And the wing of an eagle is amazing. It covers a lot of territory. Eagles don't flock. They're often solo flying. Like, not like you see other birds that fly in groups and formation. As a leader, this is one of your challenges, is you are on your own in some ways. You always have a landing place. Eagles always land someplace, and they're supported in their landing, but they're on their own a lot. And this may feel like what happens when you're a visionary leader. You're not going along with the crowd all the time, but you're using your vision in a way to expand something. Also, having a desirable direction. What is your desire about what direction you want to go? Is it clear? Are you focused on this vision? Are you clear about the direction? Are you focused on your direction? Are you willing to put the time and energy to have a clear direction? One of the, ver one of the purposes of a vision statement is to create clarity so that people know what kind of decisions to make. Do I go this direction or this direction? If we're a maverick leadership group, are we wanting to invite people into the group who don't like maverickness? That would be a no. If we want to have advanced leaders, then we don't want to have people who are still working on their competent communicators. <clears throat> that would not be a match. So having a context for making the decision is really important. The vision statement needs to include that. Here are some questions that you could ask if you are creating a vision statement. What does an organization do well? What is the most important thing the organization wants to do? What makes the organization unique or special? What does the team expect from the organization? What makes the team feel good about the organization? And taking each one of these is very helpful. A vision statement also provides a general vision. It's not specific. You don't get into a lot of details, like how much money do we want to make, or how many clients do we want to have, or it's, the focus is what do we want to have as an attraction for people? How do we want to attract people? In our group, it's maverick leadership. We want to attract maverick leaders, right? That's our general direction. We want advanced feedback. That's our general direction. How are people going to interact with each other? Well, that's part of the vision statement, right? One of the pieces in our vision statement is providing advanced feedback. That's one of the things we're expecting from each other. One of the things we've had conversations about, multiple conversations about how the feedback loop works in our group. 
How is our team, how are we interacting with each other? And how are we responding to people who are coming in and wanting to join our group? The structure of the working relationships is also included in the context of the vision statement so that the teams understand what the structure is. So if our structure is in our group is focused on leadership and speaking, that's very specific. We know the structure is going to revolve around those things. It's very specific and helpful. If people don't want that, that's not a good match for them. Is it exciting? Oh my God, is the vision statement exciting? Because it, people like excitement. People are attracted to things that are exciting. They want to participate in things that get their energy going and their blood moving and they have a reason to get up in the morning and participate. Getting up out of bed to participate in my Toastmasters group, right? I'm on the West Coast, so it requires being up early and getting prepared to be here. I want to do that, it's exciting, it's noble. <laughs> I want to help achieve success in this club. What if there isn't a vision? There's chaos, people don't know what to do. They have no idea how to be in relationship. They don't know where to go, what direction to follow. No vision, a lot of wasted resources. Time, people's time, communication time, money, scrambling around it's like looking for your keys like you don't know where your keys are all the time so you're scrambling around trying to find your keys how much time do you waste every year because you don't have a place for your keys it's the same in an organization if it, there isn't a vision then there's no way for people to understand what to do with it is there a solid foundation under the vision this isn't gonna work out too well for this sand castle builder. He knew that when he built it. Then you need to communicate the vision. As the leader, your job is to be enthusiastic because if you're enthusiastic, people will grasp that energy and follow it and be in a relationship with it. Why does the vision matter? People need to know how their tasks fit in with the vision. They need to understand that. What's the big picture? If I'm going to be doing chemical testing, I need to understand how that fits in with the company's vision. People are likely <clears throat> to participate if they've had a verbal yes, if they've actually had to say out loud, yes, I'm on board, I'm willing this, because there's a commitment that happens if they have to verbally say it. This does not work, telling people what to do without their input. The response you don't want from your vision statement is boredom. It's not that the vision statement has to be like super, super exciting, but people need to feel excited about the vision statement, about the vision of where you're going. Commit to the vision. If you're not committed to this downhill run, you're going to be in deep trouble. So commit to the vision. This is your job as a leader, as a visionary leader, is to commit and put everything that matters to you in the process. And communicate about it, talk about it. Like we've been doing in our, our table topics last week was talking about the vision. I'm talking about the vision today. We read every week, why is that important? Cooperation and collaboration is a very important part of this process as well. So making sure people are on board so that they can use cooperation and co collaboration is necessary. Four, be flexible about changes. What if AT&T hadn't ever been flexible and they always wanted to just stay with this one telephone and they never wanted to upgrade? They'd be in deep trouble. They'd be out of business. There are companies that go out of business because they can't stay up with the changes. So you need your vision statement need, need to be changed. Effective leaders, visionary leaders, manage their realm. This means that they know they have a realm and they manage it and they take responsibility for that. You can delegate within it, but you know what the big picture is and you follow that. Effective leaders know that communication is a two-way street. You need to communicate and listen. Listening is really important in the communication process. 
and listening to your team. What if they do you have somebody on your team who's a really amazing researcher and they're constantly on the internet and talking with people and reading a lot and finding out all these things? What input could they have that might help make the vision more specific and clear? Or they see some trend happening that you've missed and they need to share that with you. So trusting your team members is really important. It's your realm, manage it. Here's an example, Steve Jobs, right? CEO of Apple, asked John Sully to come in and be CEO. John Sully takes over, he fires Steve. Steve loses his vision and it's over a product that is visionary for Steve that Sully doesn't get. So Steve loses his vision, starts Pixar, and eventually comes back and fires Scully. Great example of how vision can get lost when you give your power away or your realm management away to somebody else. It will be smooth sailing, mostly, little bumps here and there, the wind comes up, when everybody is committed to the vision and can follow it. If you want to build a ship, don't drum up people to collect wood and don't assign them tasks and work, but rather teach them to long for the endless immensity of the sea. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Pamela, for a very informative presentation, education session on having that leader vision as a leader. Let's take a minute and send some feedback to Pamela in the chat window. Okay, I think that that's our minute. Uh, our next speaker is a guest online member from Mexico, Mark Worthy. According to him, the roles that he has assumed during his life have expanded rapidly and in a positive way. We perform different roles on a daily basis in order to operate at an optimal level. Additionally, for some, we are in the second half of our lives. Today, Mark will navigate us through his trek as a global citizen and how he found himself in the world of coaching. He will speak from effective coaching path, level one, mastering the fundamentals, evaluation and feedback. This is speech one for that section. Please join me in welcoming Mark as he delivers his speech entitled, Trajectory Over Time. Mark Worthy. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters. When I became a Toastmaster, it was because I had become a political operative. This was back in 2007. I was living and working in Europe, specifically the Netherlands. I knew that I had to change the manner in which I was delivering in the classroom, especially as an interviewer's target. If there was one thing I needed to be, it didn't need to be, excuse me. It was nondescript. I needed to be unique. I thought I was distancing myself from my work in the classroom and with clients. However, quite the opposite took place because I grew and I was able to adapt what I did in the classroom, what I did for clients, but also I gained a new opportunity. I coach. It was fascinating for me because 
I had never considered it. But I think it's very important for us to look at ourselves because in many ways all of us are coaches. And this is an opportunity to share best practices to enhance what we do, especially, for instance, building a new club like Advanced Toastmasters. I'd like to chat with you about my professional career, my work with Toastmasters, and business opportunities. And hopefully, at the end of this presentation, you will have insights with regard to how we can leverage what we do in a different way. Consulting came to me very early in life, in my career. I recognized quite early that it was necessary for me to be engaged, uh, to be patient, to be persistent, to be attuned to the needs of my client. That required a certain way of engagement, and it helped me quite a bit. Moreover, at the same time, academia was such that although I was a content resource, it was frequently necessary for me to function as an advisor. Uh, as a student, as a student grows and learns frequently, they call upon this. Faculty in, help, in order to help them navigate the process. And that's what I did. As someone who could be trusted, family and friends. So that carried with it a certain level of engagement that I needed to uh, respect, honor, and manage throughout the course of my life. All of this played into Toastmasters because you see, when I became a Toastmaster again, it started because I needed to be interviewed. But however, as I navigated through it, I took on certain roles. First thing I did, especially as a member and in member in club leadership, I insisted at this university club that we mentor all of our student members through their CC and CL. That way it was a win-win. The students were able to gain status, the club was able to gain distinguished status. Moreover, we strengthened it and increased our prestige on campus. It segued into me being a mentor. When I mentored a club and, and it launched, there was a great sense of fulfillment. And in many ways, I felt, if I can use a metaphor for men in particular, I gave birth to something, and I had a level of responsibility. And that stayed with me. Once I navigated into club operations, I became an area governor. I recognized that more than one club depended on me. It was humbling because here, too, I was altering the way I functioned, and I was doing so on the behalf of the beneficiaries, the members of the club. All of this contributed to me because business opportunities presented themselves. Again, as I mentioned, I lived and worked abroad for some time, and I found in the academic environment as well as in the corporate environment, presentation skills training was necessary. Because understand, Mexico needs to learn English yesterday. I've been engaged with learning and development. I have made that transition into C-suite consulting because there are many executives who need to have the support and need the coaching that is essential for them to present. And we've read the results of the research. Sometimes language acquisition becomes a challenge when one is past 36. And that's what many individuals encounter here. It's important for me to share this with you because I think that we need to reflect upon who we are, what we do, and how we can benefit others, how we can benefit this club. Pamela discussed extensively the focus that a club should have, especially if it endeavors to be at an advanced level. 
retrospect, I realized how fortunate I am for what I had and how it helped me. And also, again, through sharing our best practices is extremely important. Uh, the insights we gain from one another are extremely valuable, if I can use that term. We're not going to be dull. We're not going to be not, uh, nondescript. Challenge ourselves to do as best as we possibly can. Don't forget that it's okay to pat yourself on the shoulder because frequently we forget that collectively we possess a great deal and from us, this club will advance. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Mark, for giving us some great insight onto your achievements in leadership and where you've gone. I think we can all learn from that. And I think that we can all say you definitely were not nondescript. Okay, moving along with the agenda. I have to actually get back to the agenda. <laughs> oh yes, let's all take a, mo a minute to uh, send Mark some feedback by, via the chat box again. Okay, now it comes time for our table topics, our impromptu speaking session. I, did you see my chat of suggesting we go straight into evaluations? Oh, because I we, in about three or four minutes, would need to be doing that anyway. We usually do evaluations starting about 20 minutes before the hour. Uh, okay, I actually- It's a suggestion, well, not a requirement. Well, my clock said uh, we got 12.34 now and the evaluations would start about 12.40 or 12.43 according to the schedule. So okay, I we have a that's few fine. Table topics. So I think that I, we will still do a couple of table topics. I think they're always worthwhile. And I'd like to make sure that we give our table topics master that opportunity. So please welcome past district governor, Rick Weiner to give our table topics. Thank you, thank you. I wanted to have a little fun today. And this is the time of the year that we have some major religious holidays, Easter, Good Friday, and we have Quorum and then Passover. And on Passover, we have a, we ask four questions. And they start with, why is this night different than all other nights? So my question is, what is different about this club than all other clubs? Marty, could you answer that for us? If you could unmute yourself, we could even hear you. Well, that is an appropriate question for me, Rick, as I ask those four questions and sometimes have the opportunity to answer them as well. In this particular case, what's different about this Toastmasters group is that everyone is at a very advanced level of creating and producing and delivering speeches. You don't find very much in the way of filler words. 
or some of the other grammatical errors that beginners slip up on. And evaluations tend to be more direct and specific so that all of us get something more out of it. We, uh, there's definitely a maverick quality about what we do. And you can see that everybody is striving to improve from week to week. That is what I see that's different from this group and from all other groups. Back to you, Mr. Table Topics Master. Thank you, Marty. That was definitely a not a nondescript answer. My next question could be, what is it about you, your journey in Toastmasters, that brought you to this club so that what is it you're look, looking to grow from? What is it you're le looking to get out of participating here? And Trish, could you answer that one for us? Yes, could you repeat the question, Rick? What is it about this club that you're looking to get willing to learn that you're not getting somewhere else? Thank you, Rick. Yes, the, the reason I have joined this club is that I do want to grow. I do want to be able to help others to be able to see where they can use the most improvement to actually improve their speaking skills. And in retrospect, I will also be able to become a better speaker because I will see they use a, a certain technique. I was like, oh, I could use that technique and be become a better speaker. So it's, it's twofold, it's hand in hand. And again, like Marty said, it, dealing with Toastmasters, we all have been around the corner <laughs> at least a time or two. And we're even more respectful of each other and, and, and generous and able to fall forward. And catch each other when necessary. And I forgot to time myself, so I will go ahead and turn it back to you. Thank you so much. And that is fun. And I probably should have timed you, but good job. Next question. At the end of the Seder, one of the things that we say in the Seder is the meal that we have for Passover and when we tell the story. We finish off next year in Jerusalem. Where do you picture yourself next year, Don? Thank you, Rick. Um, where do I picture myself next year? I picture myself within this club next year to be a fully chartered club to continue the growth that we have going on here. And for sure, I really hope not just to be in Jerusalem. I'd love to, to travel and visit, <laughs> but I, I'd like to, to experience this club as some place that I know that I've put my efforts into it and committed. And I think Pamela talked about this a lot in her speech where the vision is there, my commitment is there, and that we're, we're creating a team that also has that kind of commitment to move this dial in a direction that says, we are maverick leaders, we're doing things differently. It's tough doing this stuff online but we're going to show up and we're going to keep doing it because it is a different experience looking at ourselves while we're talking than it is being in the front of the room and not having that immediate feedback of what we are doing. So I look forward to wherever we are next year, but being there together with all of you. Back to you. Thank you. Mr. Toastmaster, do we have time for any more? I think probably this is a good time to move on to our evaluations. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Table Topics Master. Thank you very much for participating. <laughs> thank you everyone for participating. Now we do move on to our evaluation section. And for that, I'd like to introduce our general evaluator, our club president, Don Nacera. Don. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. I appreciate it. And before we get into this, I want to make sure that our 
timer has the opportunity to give a timer's report for the Toastmaster or the table topics section. So Tricia, could you do that? Yes. For our table topics, Marty spoke for 58 seconds. I forgot to time myself. I think I spoke at least for 30 seconds. <laughs> And then Don spoke for one minute and 16 seconds. And that's my timer's report for the table topics. And speeches? Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, she said table topics. Okay. Uh, for speech, our speakers for today, uh, Pamela spoke for 14 minutes and 27 seconds. And Mark spoke for six minutes and 48 seconds. Wonderful. Well, thank you for that information, Tricia. I appreciate that. And at any time during my general evaluation, if you'd like to send, we'll have them sent to Doug, our topics mat or tabletop or whatever, our Toastmasters for today. The, the, are, we not, are we voting or are we not voting? If you want to vote. <laughs> Actually, I don't think that we, we decided not to do that. So we'll go in, straight into the evaluation. So. There, our first evaluator is Jim Adams, and I'm going to make sure that he is on here. He was, yes, he is on and with us. So, Jim, I would love to invite you on to give your evaluation of Pamela's speech. So, please help me welcome Jim Adams. Thank you very much, everybody. I just wanted to let you know that you're probably going to hear some interesting sounds in the background. Just bear with me. I will probably stop talking if that happens and then proceed afterward. The speech that Pamela shared with us today was one that I thought was very poignant and applicable to this particular audience. And I think that because I've given these before, these are things that we can share often and with variety, even though that perhaps Pamela is giving it now, this is great information she shared with us a very important speech in my mind. The evaluation for these advanced manual speeches, as she told me prior, is very generic. She had, a, so I'll just briefly go over some of those points and then focus on the ones that I thought were, were more intriguing. The introduction was very concise. Uh, the vocal variety, because of my venue today with not being able to see the slides so much and her small box window where she, you can still see the person speaking in the corner. I wasn't able to see that. So I was really looking at this or listening to it more so than, than seeing it. So from the audio perspective, I, I focused on it more today than I normally have. And I thought that Pamela shared with us a very, a very great speaking voice. If this was an audio book or something that was just a podcast, I think that her vocal uh, variety was was good and that she's got a very pleasant voice to share this to share with us her her topics uh, was she adequately prepared yes visual aids I really really do like the way that she takes the obvious boilerplate slides that were given for these advanced manuals and then creates some really great content in them with pictures that are very and compelling I especially like the eagle I liked the metaphor that you shared with us about the eagle. I think I might have actually put in a couple of eagle slides during that uh, lengthier portion of your speech. And that might have made it better as far as a visual on the visual side of things. I like the word maverickness. I thought that was funny. I think we should make more playful uh, remarks like you did. And you probably could have capitalized on that more with feedback like this, I think that you know authenticity is a very common word that's been coming up in our group, and the maverick concept uh, was good too. I also thought we might need a mascot now. Just I jokingly, if I were giving this speech, I might have probably taken a tangent about what is the maverick mascot that our club could uh, could invite in and, and adopt. So I wanted to share that strange addition to your potential re, uh, presentation of this speech. The other techniques I liked was the fact that you gave very specific examples that are related to our club, but then you also 
and not only you, you started this towards the end, and I think what I want to suggest is maybe you start it sooner, is to share also some some examples that are used earlier in your speech. Yes, you talked about the CEO with Apple, and you talked about uh, chemical testing, and you talked about things outside of the club. I think, though, that you could probably do that throughout. And then also the contrasting examples that you showed, what happens when you don't have a leadership, I thought was also something that was a, a technique you can employ throughout the entire speech, not just in a one example in one slide. So those are the, the two things that I wanted to emphasize was share three paths, three parallel paths, the contrasting, what happens if you don't, the Toastmaster related examples, and then also share more frequently the non-Toastmaster related. And I, I really enjoyed the way that you did pull all that together towards the end, but I would only suggest that maybe you start out that way as well. So that's my, that's my evaluation for, for you, Pamela. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. At this time, because we, Pamela asked for an advanced evaluation, I'm going to uh, ask Trisha to give maybe a 30 second time. So if there's anyone who has 30 seconds worth of uh, additional feedback for Pamela that they would like to offer that they can do at a 30 second thing, I would love for you to come on, present that uh, to the club and give her some additional feedback and just kind of raise your hand or do this if you have any. Marty, go ahead. What I wanted to offer, Pamela, was that your slides were very appropriate in the respect that you had very few words. You allowed the pictures on those slides to tell the story. I remember the last time I, I did an evaluation for you, I, I criticized the fact that there was too many words and you were actually reading from the slides. You corrected that. And so I wanted to recognize the fact that you actually improved that and you made slides that were very visible and told the, right, the correct story. So thank you for that. Thank you, Marty. Appreciate that. Does anyone else have some 30 second feedback that they would like to offer Pamela today? Anyone want to give some extra feedback? I, I'll say really quickly that I took a lot of notes. I did enjoy your speech and the part about your hand gestures, though Jim might not have been able to see, was you actually used hand gestures that I enjoyed. There, were, there was at one point that you said like reaching in and you kind of re reached in your hand and it was kind of effective. And then it, right after that, you used your hands in the screen and I enjoyed that the rest of the time. I think, it, again, it's really hard to do that, but I enjoyed the fact that you incorporated it just a tiny bit and it worked effectively, so thank you. And at this, oh, at this point, I would like to call on our second evaluator, which is Marty Green, and he is going to evaluate Mark on his speech. So Marty, can you, join us and give your evaluation of Mark. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, General Evaluator. Mark, there is nothing nondescript about you, which is a double negative, but it's appropriate. The thing I always listen for in your speeches and the thing I try to model is your clear enunciation, your phrasing. You always give time for the listener to absorb the last thing you said and learn from it before you move on to the next thing. And I listen really carefully for that, and I try very hard to, to model that. Thank you for doing that. The other thing you do is you start out by saying what it is that you're going to be telling us, and then you go on to tell us, and then you summarize it. And that's a great method because, because it's clear what, the, what your mission is. The thing that I would love to see more of, I was a little lost you meandered a little bit from your, your own story to how it applies to Toastmasters. And you were kind of going back and forth between those two. And I was listening really carefully to get the message, but the message wasn't clear. So if I was going to work on something, it would be to improve the clarity of the message that you're trying to deliver. On the other hand, though, you always reinforce for us 
the relevance of Toastmasters, no matter where we are in life's journey, you always tell us how Toastmasters has helped you and how it relate, has related to your life. And that inspires me to always tell my members and my friends that Toastmasters, you never learn everything. There's, it's always a path. It's always a journey to continue on. So that's a very helpful thing. And I would return it back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you, Marty. And once again, I appreciate that. Uh, once again, I would like to ask Mark, would you like for us to do the advanced evaluation for you? Yes, thank you. So if there is somebody who would like to give 30 seconds worth of additional feedback verbally for Mark, uh, Pamela, go ahead. And Trisha, if you could please continue to time, I appreciate it. So Mark, I love that you are consistently in your speeches talking about your personal experience and how you're applying Toastmasters to your life and to other people's lives and the impact. One of the things that I want to hear more of is like at some point is a specific story of one person that you can do an arc on about how you saw them improve and your role with it to take ownership of your mentoring role in a very specific circumstance. I think that would help me understand. Thank you, Pamela. Is there someone else who would like to offer some advanced feedback for Mark? Additional piece. Jim, are you unmuted? I am. I don't have anything other to, uh, to offer at this point for that, but I think it's, it's important that we think about this moving forward, that we should all be prepared to evaluate when a speaker is proceeding. Yeah, great. Thank you. Rick, did you have any additional thoughts that you would like to add for either of our speakers? Well, a little bit. I actually was thinking about Pamela's speech. It was very well done for a canned speech. I mean, they're not the easiest speeches to work with because your, your material is, is there, but you have to interpret it. And I think the interpretation of that speech would be stronger if you use more enthusiastic vocal variety. For example, a leap of faith. And, and I know you're not going to jump and have that body language, but on an online club, that stronger enthusiasm within the voice, I think, would help the speech go to the next level. Yeah, thank you, Rick. That was great feedback. And it's, it is a tricky thing to try to leap when we're on camera because something happens to the, the, vid the video quality and stuff. So we have to keep playing with that and we have to keep testing it out for ourselves whether or not it's a distraction because remember when we're doing this, you can't see my hand, but uh, just continue to, to stretch that individually. I must be frozen. Can you see me? Okay, great. Okay, so my general evaluation portion, I want to make sure that I pull up in our last couple of minutes, our awe counter. And are you here? Can you unmute yourself and just go ahead? Is that Doug? Yes. Yep. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. For my reports, um, first I'll report, uh, I'm just gonna report on each person regardless of their role. So Pamela gave quite, uh, spoke for quite a bit of time. She had basically no filler words that I saw or heard. I liked her phrase, little minute details. And what I really noticed with Pamela speaking, is she made very effective use of, the, of a pause instead of throwing in um or ah. She just held it and moved on. So that was very well done. Mark had one um, he used the word of the day, great. And I really liked his, his phrase, Mexico needs to learn English yesterday. That was really effective. Next I had Rick, who had one and, but he did use the word of the day, so well done there. Marty 
had a couple of places in the evaluation where you had double words like two, two, you know, where they were repeated, where they weren't necessary. Other than that, there were no filler words, although I did notice he used the phrase filler, amusing. Trisha, I like the phrase in retrospect. I think that worked very well. She did have a couple of ums or ahs, and I noticed that she used and several times to connect sentences where it wasn't necessary. So watch out for that. Dawn had also a couple of double words in her speaking and used and I think unnecessarily once. And then Jim had one um, but he had several double words or false starts in his sentences where he'd kind of say something and then go back and restate it. Although I, I did also mm -hmm. like his use of the word poignant. I thought that was really well done and descriptive. Also the uh, phrase audio perspective was well done. And I noticed in terms of the word of the day, it got used a number of times, although being a negative word, we had to kind of make it as a double negative each time, which I think added a challenge I wasn't expecting. So that was kind of interesting. I think whether we pulled through well. Back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you, Doug. And as the General Evaluator, I'm going to ask uh, Trisha to do our timers report for our evaluation portion of the meeting. Trisha. Thank you. Jim, you evaluated <clears throat> for uh, your evaluation was four minutes and 12 seconds. Marty, your evaluation was one minute and 45 seconds. And then our additional 30 second con or counts, uh, Marty spoke for 35 seconds. Don, 32 seconds, Pam, 35 seconds, and Rick, 45 seconds. Awesome. Thank it's you. Pam. Yes, Pamela, <laughs> or Pamela Love, <laughs> as I call her <laughs> lovingly and affectionately. <laughs> um, and thank you again. Oops, I keep muting myself when I'm wanting to go over. So, Doug, at this time, I'm just going to wrap up and, and instead of putting it back to you and then you can immediately pull it back to me. I think that would be more effective. I wanted to say thank you so much to you, Doug, for doing a great job of stepping in as our Toastmaster of the day. You are always up for the challenge and I want to, I really want to appreciate you for your ability to do that consistently, calmly, and kind of without any sweat off your back. I appreciate that you don't make a big deal about it and that you can step in and be a professional in that way. So I just want to say thank you very much in a big way for showing your maverickness because it really is out of the box to kind of not be disturbed that there's not, you know, not a Toastmaster here. It's out of the box to say, yeah, it's no big deal. I can do this. So I appreciate that. And at this time, I think we are at the end of our meeting. I'm going to, oh, go ahead. Mark? Yes, Ma okay. Madam President, can we discuss the agenda for next week? I'm going to. I wanted to stop. Okay, excuse recording. me. Yes, Pardon yes. me. Awesome. Thank you very much, though, for reminding us. I am going to stop the recording at this time and, and officially put the stamp of uh, meeting adjourned on our meeting, and then I will go straight into the agenda for next week. So thank you very much, everyone. And at this time, I'm